How can you have a burger but no pickles? You can take the train literally anywhere. Hello, hello my favorite people. Today we're cool. Oh. Hello my favorite people, today I'm going to be talking to you about things about the UK that I found very weird. That's weird. As you guys know, two years ago I spent the summer in the UK and I actually planned to come back this year, but with the pandemic and everything going on and y'all's lockdown, that's not going to be possible. So I just thought I'd reminisce in this video and talk about the experience that I had and probably will not be able to have again in the near future. A lot of these are going to be very detailed or more broad, so make sure you watch the entire video so you don't miss any of my explanations or the things that I'm listing. Okay, let's get into the video. So obviously I was in the UK for about three months and while I'm there, I can't just be eating burgers and McDonald's all day. So I had to actually go grocery shopping. And y'all's grocery stores, if you can call them that, are just weird, sorry to say. The packaging, the labels, it was really just hard, again, the metric system to convert. I buy my milk in gallons, so to see it in a in a pint was just bamboozlement. I didn't really know how much I was buying. I didn't know if I was getting enough product for the money that I was spending. It was just all really confusing, which is again kind of my Americanness coming through, but it was really confusing to understand the measurements and quantities of, of everything. And while we're talking about the grocery store, y'all's milk is in cardboard. In America, whenever you go to the store to buy milk, it's either in a big plastic tub, I guess you could call it, or a gallon. Y'all's is in, what do you even call it? Y'all's is in the stuff that you have to like unfold the little corners and like pinch open and pour it in like a little box. The next thing about the UK that I found very weird was the fact that y'all have an entire lane designated for bicycles. In America, again, we have to share the road with bikes or people biking. There's no stoplights, there's nothing specifically for the bikers. But in the UK, y'all had actual, like, not just bike lanes, but stoplights for the bikes. In the US, again, you just have to look both ways, hope no one's coming and keep going if you're on a bike. You don't have to stop. But again, in the UK, there's an actual lane to the side just for bicycles and those caddy drivers. You know what I'm talking about? The guy who overcharged me 50 bucks just to take me around the block. Everybody there was so friendly. And I don't know if, again, if it was just because I was a tourist or you know something specifically about me being an American, but everyone that I would talk to, whether it be just a common person on the road or someone working in the train station, was so willing to talk to me, to help me, to direct me. And not only that, like they didn't just want to help, they actually wanted to like ask me questions about what I was doing there, how I was, how I was liking the UK. They actually were interested in my trip and my experience and we're just all very friendly, which was again shocking because we think the UK is like, everyone has a job to do, you're on your way to do something, get out of the way, don't bother me, I don't wanna to talk to you. But that was not my experience at all and talking to people made me feel very welcomed. From the people who actually were locals, it was very heartwarming. Y'all had Southern hospitality, which I was not expecting. The fact that I could get a burger for one pound in America, the dollar menu is not really the dollar menu, but the little corner stores that were by the area that I was staying, I could walk in with one single pound, give it to them, and get an entire burger. That's insane. That's something we definitely need to adopt. Be able to fill yourself up with a meal for a dollar, that's amazing. Y'all actually have like full-blown meals that you can get for a pound or a couple pounds. That is very, I hate to use the word inspirational because again, it's just a cheap meal, but it's really something I commend y'all for. That being said though, I had to specifically always ask for a pickle, and on top of that, they didn't know what a pickle was. How can you have a burger but no pickles? Come on, they go hand in hand. That was culture shock for sure. But then again, if the worst thing I can complain about is freaking pickles, that's a good thing. One thing that I found very odd, again, was that you can take the train literally anywhere. I could literally go from Barking Station all the way up to Westminster Abbey or, you know, whatever. The train took me anywhere I needed to go and it was surprisingly easy to navigate. Me being an 18 year old girl navigating the entire UK by myself, I didn't once get lost. I would occasionally need to ask for directions, but for the most part, even when stops were shut down or there were different changes in the route, it was all reflected in my Google Maps on my phone. And on top of that, y'all have huge signs and like the, the circle underground stuff. You always know where you're at. The underground is always shown. There's always big signs directing you to get onto the train station and everything is very accessible, which was really good. Unlike freaking New York City. Speaking about the city, not only were y'all's train stations and the underground very clean, just the entire 
entire city was very clean. There wasn't a lot of trash. I didn't see many homeless people, though y'all do say that y'all do have a lot of them, but everywhere was just very clean and well kept and presentable, which is not something that's common in America. <laughs> Oh man. Another culture shock that I had, the Queen's Guard is not for tours. Like they're not there just for pictures and to like interact with and talk with. In fact, you're not supposed to interact with them or make them smile at all. They're actual like legitimate soldiers. But growing up and walking into the UK, I thought, you know, that's just a staple of London, which again, I thought was the UK, just London. You know, you have these people in those red coats with the big furry hat and that's just, they're there for you to take pictures with. And I was kind of confused whenever I tried to take a picture or get close to one of them and they like gave me a side eye and it was kind of scary because like they're standing there with that big horse and she had like this, I don't, I don't know, it was like a musket, I guess you could call it. And she gave me like a dirty side eye and I was like, oh, well, okay. But yeah, they're real soldiers. You're not supposed to interact with them like they're toys. They're actual people on top of that. Something I found weird was that I was able to freaking just buy alcohol. From the moment I got out of the United States to the time I landed in Reykjavik in Iceland, to getting to the UK, I was able to buy alcohol. It was just weird. Cause again, in the United States, you have to be 21 to buy alcohol. And here I am 18 buying drinks by myself, all these different options. It was almost overwhelming, but it was still, I guess, not, not cool, but interesting that if I wanted to, I had the option to buy alcohol. And lastly, the thing that I found very just weird was how historical everything was. Everything in the UK just felt like you were in a time capsule or you were traveling back in time. Like everything just felt very historical and important. The globe or just the architecture, everything seemed very important. But I think that also added to my experience in a good way. What are some things that you find very weird about the United States if you have visited or that you as a person from the UK found weird about your home? Let me know down below. Subscribe from new here so you can see more content like this and on the reaction channel, I do a bunch of cultural reactions so go check that out too like this video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you in the next one bye